In this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about how looping works when you combine it with graph with um, the graphics files, and you can use do some really cool things with the co with combining graphics and looping. So we're going to create some nesting squares. We start by getting a count of how many squares we, the user wants us to draw, and we ask the user for the largest size. Then we're going to calculate for our for loop what we're going to count by. So if we're going to count by 12s, by 15s to get there. Then we're going to get the start size, because we asked the user for the largest size. We need to get the smallest size, the size of the first square that we're going to increment from. And that's going to equal size, which is the largest one, minus count by, which is what we've calculated the number that we're incrementing by, times count. So that way we subtract down to the smallest size. I've set the pen width to 10, and I've set the pen color just by using the choose color option, and I think we'll choose yellow, hit OK, hit OK, and then we put the pen down because we want to draw. Now I'm using two loops. The first loop is going to be incremented, and the counter for my loop is called loop count. My initial value is start, which we calculated right here, and my final value is size, which was input by the user. Now I'm stepping by count by. Now when we actually put in the count by, notice it says the keyword of round size divided by count, because it probably won't come up to an even whole number, so we'll round up to the nearest whole number. Now we're going to do a move to loop count minus size by loop to count minus size. Well, we're drawing in a grid, and 0, 0 is the center, so what we're making it do is take the largest size of the square, so if they say 300, and move out to the bottom 300 so that we can see the whole thing in the screen. And then to draw the square, we have to loop four times for the to draw each of the sides. So we'll move forward loop count, we'll turn right 90 degrees. Forward loop count, turn right 90 degrees, we'll change the colors. Color forward will actually let you change how your colors increment. So we had a start size, and it will just, or a or color right here, it's our initial color, and we'll increase the color by 50 shades each time. So let's give it a shot. And the first thing it does is it asks me, how many squares should I draw? And I'm going to tell it I want you to draw 30 squares, and the largest one should be 400. And this is the output that it gives me. Now when I was initially doing this, I made an error in my start size, where I would just done it in size minus count, I think it was. To find the error and to watch it work, I just had it output my loop count so I could see where we're at. So I can try this again, and this is a great error checking technique. So I'm going to put in 30, I'm going to put in 400, and it'll show you 10, 23, and notice it's drawing it down here, 36, and you can see that it is incrementing and moving I'm just going to hit enter, if that works the same as OK. So it will draw all of my squares. Now I told you that I corrected to make it all appear here. Now if I had not done this, if I was just using, if I didn't have this in here at all, we're going to hit cancel here. I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to hit play. And we'll do 30, or 350, ooh that should have, was bad. Uh, that's going to be funky. These are on top of each other because it's counting by one, which was not what I wanted to do. You see that it works, and it's drawing that square, but it's drawing it on top of itself. Now, in a more 
sophisticated program, I would have done error checking so I couldn't have accidentally put in the number of squares to be 350. Because when you are creating a program, you should typically test for good, bad, and ugly data. That was ugly data. It was a numeric type, but it was not within the bounds that I specified. We'll get more into error checking as we go, but you can see I can force it to go ahead and finish this by continuing to hit OK, which I'm just really rapidly hitting the Enter key. So you're watching it draw each new one, incrementing it by one pixel, which is a kind of neat look. And if it had done it one, all at one time without showing me what it was drawing, that would have been OK. I tend to leave my mistakes in here because other people are going to make them too. And so there we go. So that this is why I do an offset. So when I'm doing an offset, by removing that, it it makes it so it's not starting each square at the zero zero mark because if you don't do anything every square is started at zero zero and it draws over itself which was not the look that I wanted so I put in and we don't need this anymore so we put in an assignment of no we didn't do that what we did was we changed the start point. So what we did was in the graphics area we changed where our where we started to with the move to and we took we set it to size minus Well, let's just start with size by size so we, you can see what we do if we just move it by size by size except that's not going to give us the result we want 30, 30 um, 300 see if we do it size by size it's positive it moves it up here and that still is just starting it at a new point so what we actually want it to be is um, We actually want to subtract size plus increment. So it's loop count minus size. Let's try that. And that's going to make it change every time we do it. So each square is a different size. And we're subtracting size, which is the size of the largest one. And we'll go ahead and hit play. And we'll put in 35 and 400. And what it, that does is by subtracting the size of the largest square and moving it each time, we are taking it from the 0, 0 position down the size of the largest square. And then each time, we come closer. So you get sort of a 3D feel here. So when we're using loop count minus size, Loop count is actually positive because it's going to be um, 12, 14, whatever, minus whatever the size we put in, and that forces it to start in the lower quadrant where each number would be negative. So because this is 0, 0, this would be positive, this would be negative, this would be half negative, half positive, and so on. So that shows you how to make it stack like that. Now for your homework assignment, you're going to be working with circles. And I've been doing a little bit of playing with circles. And you can see here, I'm just going to delete that for right now. We start with a pen width of 8 and a pen color of whatever I selected. Pick something. And then we set the size. And right here what we're doing is we're, we're going to keep going through our loop until the size is greater than 400. And we don't need that. So I've got a circle, and we're going to just change that. So the large circle, we're going to start with 100, and we're going up to 400. So we're starting at a circle of 100. We're going up to 400 with size equal size plus 10. So each circle will get larger. And we're going to do colors forward of 30. So let's see what happens here. 
and you don't see all of the different circles because they're all drawing on top of each other. So what we want to do is change this so that the we actually want to set this to um, not one because we're not incrementing this. So we're not going to do a circle of 100. We're going to do a circle of 100 and we'll set this to start and then we're going to change the size of start we're going to make start equal to itself plus 10 so this should increment the circle so we can sort of see them nest and that looks kind of cool now you can do this very simply here incrementing them but what I don't want you to do by accident I don't want you to use the filled circle because if we do the same thing in the filled circle each time it draws it and it's redrawing it as we speak it's filling the whole area in different colors. So that's not what we want to do. So as long as the how large of a circle, the circle should be start, which should be 100. And as long as the size is less than 400, oh, this is, this, this is an infinite loop. Don't do that. Your infinite loop should be, we actually want this to be size here equals 100 and we want the filled circle to be size and size should equal size plus 10 okay let's try this one more time now each time it's drawing it it's actually drawing it on top of the previous circle and we can show that if we have an output of size, which will let us hit OK for each one so we can watch them draw. So we're going to hit play and I'm just going to hit enter for each one of these. And you can see each time we're drawing the circle, we're covering up the circle beneath it because it's always drawing the next circle on top. So if you want to use full circles, what you actually have to do is reverse this. So we would start at a size of 500 and we would keep going until as long as the size is greater than zero and here we're going to make it I'm going to speed this up a little bit, minus 20. And let's try that. So the first circle is going to draw at the size of 500, 480. And see, since we're doing it on top of each other, getting smaller, you can actually see them all. So be careful with using the circle versus the filled circle. Remember that the last one drawn is always on the top. Be careful not to create an infinite loop. I showed you how I accidentally did that. Make sure you're actually incrementing the test subject that you're doing here. Since this is, our loop is testing on size, we've got to make sure we're incrementing size. So I showed you one of the really common errors because I didn't increment my loop variable. So that's some basics that should show you how to use some of the graphics with some neat looping options to do some pretty cool stuff using looping and graphics.